Gaston Bachelard is a French thinker who wrote and thought about both philosophy and science in a way that brings the desired unity to these modes of inquiry. His academic background is in physics, and he eagerly explores every hidden crevice in the physical world. As a thinker, always at the edge of thought, Bachelard is just as fascinated by noumena as he is phenomena. His explorations eventually lead him to fuse what he calls the material imagination, which he accesses through concentrating on elements that offer surprise to our experiences in and with the world. He attends to elements like air, earth, fire, and water, each of which function like creative heuristics in his writing. These elements appear in the physical world while carrying their rich histories of aesthetic force with them into the present moment. Histories that are constantly and creatively renewed by what Bachelard calls the intuition of the instant. The greatest strength of the imagination for Bachelard is its transformative power operating in each moment. The imagination is always in dialogue with the senses. In The Poetics of Space, Gaston Bachelard offers readers a direct ontology accessible by dwelling in the world. As he carefully points out in his chapter focused on the house, before he is cast into the world, man is laid in the cradle of the house. Though he doesn't mention him by name, this section is a response to what Bachelard regards as a cold metaphysical disposition advanced by Martin Heidegger and some of his disciples. When Bachelard explains that being is already a value, the reader hears echoes of Heidegger's famous dictum, language is the house of being. In its home, man dwells. So what does it mean that being is already a value? It is likely that for Bachelard, Heidegger's notion of language carries a little too much distance to offer life and warmth akin to the bosom of the house. Although different in quality from that of Heidegger, Bachelard retains a high view of language and our relationship to it. Rather than view language as a tool, Bachelard calls language reality. This is why the poetic image carries so much weight for Bachelard. It does not bring language into closer proximity to the reader. The image is language. The same extremely delicate nuance is teased out as it relates to time, specifically the instant. Edward Casey elaborates on this in the article titled The Difference an Instant Makes, when he proposes that a Bachelardian posture toward time might prompt us to trade the noun instant for the adverb instantaneously in an effort to discipline our thinking about time. Rather than say the instant brings the new, we realize the instant is the new. It is the new now, the now as news, the new itself insofar as we can know it, or at least as we can sense it. This, all of this. This orientation offers a dynamism inherent in the instant that is present in a word, just like it is present in the image. Although to say it is present here might be somewhat misleading. Apprehending this presence requires the reader to attend to the material in consideration. For Bachelard, the material imagination is when the subject is transported into things. We attend to the word or image in the instant, which is a meditative act. Reading is an act of perception that simultaneously combines reception and creation. Richard Kearney elaborates on this delicate balance when he highlights the way the imagination receives the image as matter while also offering an image as form. Quote, for him, imagination was at once receptive and creative, an acoustic of listening and an art of participation. The two functions, passive and active, were inseparable. End quote. The poem, as a unique container of language, welcomes this kind of dynamic and creative interpretation. But what Bachelard is suggesting is that this kind of creative reading happens at the level of the word. When our senses conspire with energy in language, we expand the very material we read. These words, after all, are the keys to the universe, to the dual universe of the cosmos and the depths of the human spirit. 
For Bachelard, expanding this dual universe with our dynamic imagination is at work in space as well as time. Quote, imagination is a laboratory of the possible, inviting us through reverie and poetry to give a future to the past. And it is not just a matter of private past, but of a shared reservoir of resonances bequeathed to us by the great poets from Homer and Ovid to Rilke and Valerie, end quote.